Welcome to PhotoFinds. I'm your host Kevin and this week we have a lot of ground to cover beginning at Epcot where Flower and Garden is celebrating its 20th year as you can see. They've got the Fab Five set up at the front of the park and some topiaries um, around in other places like the Phineas and Ferb topiaries previously seen at Downtown Disney now behind Spaceship Earth. An advertisement for the Festival Center over onto the side and then some Lion King topiaries, um, many of which have been seen before uh, in the middle of the Future World area. This is something new. The Garden Retreat is really a collection of chairs, a shade structure, over on the side, not where the Rose Garden is, so on the mouse gear side. On that same pathway, then, is the Radiator Springs area which features, as you can see, this wide open area. Once upon a time, this was the butterfly house. Uh, and then this game uh, helped Tomater find car parts that are missing from his yard. And they were scattered around on those little um, fences you saw there. Topiaries for both Mater and Lightning McQueen. And a playground in the area, which is Radiator Springs themed. And uh, it looks like the hardware is new here as well, something we saw with the Oz playground a little while ago as well. Tinkerbell's Butterfly House now on the other side of Future World. Tinkerbell and uh, another fairy seen in topiary form. Monsters, Inc. has center stage. Monsters University, I should say, with a Sully that's a little bit too thin, in my opinion, and some extra monsters in the background area behind them. Now it is flower and garden season, which uh, used to mean flowers and gardens, and now it also means food and wine. They've uh, added some additional booths, and we'll get to some of that. But this uh, booth has always been here, this promenade booth, now rethemed to pineapple because they are selling uh, Dole Whip um, with rum in it. And it's, uh, as you can see, got kind of something of a line, so I think that's going to be a big seller for them. They do have the usual merchandise for Flower and Garden. And then in the Oz section, which we previously looked at, over on the right side you will see here the uh, Herbs and Vegetable Garden where they've got some uh, exhibits for you to look at and wander through. And then the Rainbird sponsor has its usual uh, um, displays. Now they've been displaced from the Canada section, which uh, has, as you remember, a new DVC booth. Now we've previously looked at this area of the Oz um, exhibit, but this wasn't there before. It's a photo location, a backdrop uh, for people to take their own pictures. The Meadow Gardens, Melody Gardens, I should say, uh, is now under construction for springtime concerts. That's over next to Interventions. And now we are out in Future World where you can see um, how the booths are kind of a miniature food and wine, where you will see um, lots of different bite-sized items, some of them kind of vaguely country-themed. This happens to be at the United Kingdom, so you'll see um, smoked salmon tartare with uh, potato and cheddar cheese biscuit and so forth. Um, it's not themed to countries the way f uh, food and wine is, but it does have a, a kind of a tie to each one of those countries that are there. This is the Italy section, for instance. Also of note, they seem to be reusing the menu board since they've just kind of painted over uh, the previous menu board and put this new one on it. Maybe it's a measure of cost savings. This is the pineapple upside down cake back from that um, promenade area there. Uh, and this is that uh, smoked salmon tartare with cheddar biscuit. As you can uh, see, it's uh, not too small. That's why I included a fork for you to see that it's um, of reasonable size for $4. Flights of beer from Germany, $13 for uh, four of them. They appear to be about uh, six, ounce, six ounce pours. This is the American Adventure Smokehouse area. And in the American Adventure, we have something new. This is the Kinsey Collection. Now, the Kinsey Collection is a collection of African art and artifacts, uh, family treasures, as it were, from the, um, the Kinsey family. And uh, you'll see the uh, sort of the exhibits in display cases around the sides, uh, some timelines around the outside walls, and then uh, we'll keep our eye on these uh, lanterns. It turns out that they tell the story in various places around the room, and uh, there's a little handle up at the front of them. You twist the handle, and the lantern kind of comes alive. It's got a little bit of a, a video inside the lantern itself, um, and it's narrated by uh, Whoopi Goldberg. So they got some high octane talent. This is uh, where the narration begins uh, to assist with telling the story of the Kinsey collection. Um, it's a really interesting collection, um, sobering in some respects uh, when you get to uh, pieces of American history that sometimes we don't think about much or pay much attention to. Uh, there's a slave registry over here on the side, for instance, that uh, uh, really is sobering to look at. 
and there's a close-up of what the lantern looks like when you're looking at it. There's that schedule of slave ownership and uh, you know what um, what physical attributes they have. Now there's walls up in here in the back of American Adventure. This is the side without the bathrooms. And previously this area was used for things like the egg hunt at Easter and so forth. We had heard rumors uh, many, many months ago that bathrooms are going into this side of American Adventure. So um, who knows if this is perhaps uh, the start of some construction on that side of American Adventure. In Morocco, the, uh, the art of henna has moved across the way. It used to be over by Moroccan on this side of the, uh, the walkway, and now it's inside here, as you can see, kind of commingled in the space with the fast food. So this was previously a sit-down area for the fast food, and now it's a, a little bit of a shop. Um, perhaps in anticipation of the entire area across the walkway closing down, we've heard other rumors that um, a Morocco-sized, a Morocco-style restaurant will go along the waterfront there, offering yet more uh, Illuminations evening seating. Test Track is once again back to doing its um, experimental design of bringing the Fast Pass folks in through this door and loading them uh, then onto the bays there. <clears throat> And Test Track also has added a third car design. So previously you had the car and the truck, and now you've got kind of an efficiency car that is possible to design as well. So as you can see, it's uh, you're getting very high numbers for efficiency with that initial design uh, having to do with the shape of the car. Here's the turnaround point for Fast Pass to come around this middle aisle back over to this way toward that uh, side door we showed you a moment earlier. This then becomes the merge point. Single riders keep going straight and uh, it, once you go through the design center you go around to the right. They've had new maps um, at all of the parks. This happens to be the Magic Kingdom map collection. Just wanted to show uh, the various colors. They've obviously gone and done this for uh, all of the languages that they normally distribute the maps in. A little bit of an update on the uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster. Uh, a little bit more happening along the tops here. Uh, this structure has gotten um, some equipment at the top. It looks maybe to be uh, an air conditioning unit. Uh, and, of course, the big story is the construction around in Liberty Square. Uh, this pathway is new. This was behind um, Scrim not too long ago opposite the uh, uh, Columbia Harbor House. Uh, and this pathway is, of course, brand new. We are at the exit to Haunted Mansion leading into the Tangled Zone. You can see the tower in the visible background there. Some theming along the, uh, the floor where they've got tire, I'm sorry, hoof prints from... Um, Courses, including one that's stamped with Maximus's name, a nice detail. So the whole area is nice. It's probably a good adjective for it. They've got uh, waterfalls, one, two here, a, a small one, and then another one off the screen on the side here coming down from this, and it goes underneath your feet into a bubbling brook on the other side. It's really a very inventive use of space. And as you can see, it's uh, extremely well themed. Uh, they went to great expense to make the uh, the plaster look authentic. Uh, everything about it looks carved and sculpted, uh, and uh, they really paid attention to some detail. So we'll zoom in on a couple of these um, posters. Here's one of them here, Hook Hand, and then Vladimir. Obviously, these are characters from the movie Tangled, and Ulf around the corner from there. Some uh, uh, some puns available or visible on the bottom of those posters. So around the corner from the Ulf poster, which is over here, you'll see the companion restroom and then a backstage door labeled um, for kingdom staff only. A perfect picture of the horse. Some of the details around the area include the frying pan out in front of um, the one restroom and then um, Flynn's uh, bag around another uh, kind of feature jutting out from atop the restrooms. The lanterns, of course, a seminal part of the story. And we'll take a quick glimpse inside um, what both of the restrooms look like. So in the men's room, you have these posters where you have people at large, captured, and pardoned. And then this changing table with this little uh, f interesting looking baby diagram, something Disney does pretty frequently with its uh, restrooms. And the restrooms themselves, moderately themed, not overly so. Frying pans again inside the restroom. Now over on the women's side, uh, my wife took these pictures, including uh, once inside the doorway. Apparently there's a lot of uh, tree and star and sun design. Uh, and in fact, you can see it continuing with the tree over the uh, roof line or the ceiling line there. And that the, um, the sun is kind of a feature of one of these lights, which I thought that was a, a neat thing. I wish the men's room were quite so decorated. Now back outside in the main area, this is a drinking fountain. 
obviously very well themed. Uh, they didn't have to go to this much expense, but they did. And that's part of this larger area off to the side, which features tables and benches and trash cans. Uh, no shade, though. That'll be an interesting uh, thing to find out what happens when it's not shady anymore, um, when the sun comes out and it's uh, the middle of summer. Now, as you can see, they've got the benches here and these curious devices on the side, which, when you look closer, are actually outlets. So these are recharging stations. Uh, and I, I think that's a wonderful idea. I hope they just find a way to enclose it uh, in case it's useful for in the summer as well. At the end of this uh, recharging station area, you'll find this post which says, as the sign says, look for friends of Pascal and the scenery hidden among the flowers and greenery. So there's that bubbling brook I was talking about. The tower is over on the side here, it comes down waterfalls and then runs underneath everything. And we are to look for Pascal or chameleons scattered throughout the area. And they're not all that easy to see uh, at first, but then they do eventually pop out. There's one of them down there. Here's another one down here. Not sure how well we can see it even when we zoom in. That's not him at all, actually. Uh, he is around the corner from there, so it's not in this picture. Um, there's the other one. Very hard to see his eyes because it's pixelated there. Maybe a little bit easier to see next to the rock. Another one from the ceiling down below. Here's the one I was talking about next to the bridge. And there's that first one we looked at. Uh, and there's uh, we found at least six of them. Um, I heard about other people saying they might have found nine, so I haven't known if all of them have been located yet. And there are those very well-themed tables and chairs, although in the direct sunlight. Now, the entire area was once stroller parking, and there is still stroller parking available, although it is extremely tight. Uh, and so perhaps there's not going to be room to do much else in this area, such as have a meet and greet. There didn't seem to be an obvious place to do a meet and greet for Rapunzel uh, in the area, although maybe that'll happen when it's uh, less brand new. Another view of that bubbling brook from behind. Splash Mountain is almost done with its refurbishment. They were cycling logs on this last weekend, although there were still construction walls up, so there was no chance it was going to open up. Now we are in the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad queue, which has um, had some new features not only added recently, we've shown you some of those, but they've had even more added and they've started to turn them on. So let's look at the, what's new. Now the gold has been here before, but now it kind of, um, when there's thunder, it kind of uh, shines in a luminescent color from within as though um, they were sparkling. And these props are new, including a, a framed portrait of Big Thunder. There's an interesting shot there. These are new along the wall, including the pay rates for Big Thunder signed by G. Willikers. A bit of a pun for us there. Now, this is a portrait at the end of um, the first room. It is um, Tony Baxter, the Imagineer, obviously, and you're able to see it even from this angle. There's some writing on the portrait. Now, this was the second or maybe third day that the entire thing was there, so it's a real crying shame that it has already been vandalized, and you can see the vandalism better from some angles than others. I saw a picture a day later where even more of his face has been written on, so they're obviously going to have to do something to prevent future Roger and Alexis people from writing their names uh, and reinstate the envelope of protection, maybe. So, back to the theming, now into the second room. Some explosive um, signs are up, as well as instructions on how to use the plungers. And then around the corner from there in the fusing cage, you'll see a number of uh, references to Imagineers. Mark Davis, Fred Jorger, uh, really a whole bunch of them. Um, Burke and Gibson, Hutchinson, they're all um, from uh, the, uh, the ranks of the Imagineers who built the older rides, um, including the ones which predated Big Thunder back at Disneyland. Now, this uh, d wasn't working for us. I'm not sure what it was meant to do. Perhaps peer down into the mine, I think, is what um, we're meant to believe that the mine is below us in this building. And in fact, there's a new diagram that suggests we are here and we can peer down into the mine uh, in various places. Uh, the mine is labeled in a couple of different ways. We'll look at a few of those. There's shaft 71. And as you know, there are no accidental 71s since 1971 was the opening date for the Magic Kingdom. And Rainbow Caverns, which was always its unofficial name anyway, but uh, makes it a little bit more official that this was um, an homage to the Rainbow Caverns mine train, one of the rides which preceded Big Thunder at Disneyland where it opened first. So those plungers we showed you in previous weeks and uh, talked about in the last couple of slides uh, now activate explosions, quote unquote. These are mist explosions that happen right next to the train. So people can try to time it so that they're getting the train itself wet as it comes around the corner. Further in the Big Thunder queue, you'll see these um, these uh, giant machines set up next to the people. 
And uh, what they are are smellitzers, like the word howitzer. It sends smells at you through these vents up at the top here. And the smells are different from um, cage to cage. And what you do is you look inside here, and you'll see uh, an image of a bird rotate into view inside of a cage. This is the canary test, and you can smell what the bird is smelling. And the bird is sometimes happy, and sometimes woozy, and sometimes the smells are good, and sometimes they're not good. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting way to pass the time. And as you can tell, it's obviously a video done with some physical effects, however however, in place. A little bit like what you see in Finding Nemo at Epcot, where they've got a physical set, uh, but then video is projected onto it. It's a, a truly interesting effect, and um, it makes the, the entire queue go by a lot faster. So there are some signs at the end of this room of the queue for the Gold Dust Saloon, the Hard Times Cafe, including an Apple Dumplings Gang reference at the bottom, and then the Pecos Bill Cafe, including a tribute to the Mile Long Bar, which was a counter service location right next to Pecos Bill once upon a time. On the ride itself, another new addition, blasting area um, at the very end of the ride after the geysers, actually. So they're continuing to plus things around the attraction. This is elsewhere in Frontierland. It struck us that a number of the cast members were twirling these lassos, a new prop they've recently handed out to the cast members. And over in Adventureland, speaking of new props, here's another one for the upcoming um, Pirates and uh, Adventure-themed uh, interactive game that they haven't yet uh, given us any details about and it's not yet turned on. This is in the alleyway next to Pirates of the Caribbean. So a little bit further down the alleyway, there's yet another portal there that you can um, see, although it doesn't do much yet. Parts of the Caribbean recently had this entire line blocked off by a wall, and as you can see, they've built a wall, a permanent wall, that takes the right side cue and immediately makes a hard right turn, an L-shaped turn, uh, into the next area. So the next area I'll show you in a moment is a familiar room. We've been there before. We used to go up this path, around the corner, and then back down the path. So we don't go down the path anymore on our way into the next room. So here is that next room where you can see they've got the, uh, the cannon set up here and the, the wall to my left um, is new. We used to just walk down that corridor entirely. So at the end of the attraction, um, this struck my fancy. It may have been there for all eternity for all I know, but I don't know that I've seen it before. It's a, an option to engrave, engrave ID tags with uh, pirate themes. Now for those of us who think uh, Club 626 in Tomorrowland is uh, the sort of thing that doesn't really belong there, I thought I would show some photographic proof that uh, the visiting tourists anyway and during the spring break season really seemed to like it. The place was packed this particular evening. And on our walk out, I came across a picture of something that's just too adorable to not take a picture of. A bunch of girls dressed up as princesses, perhaps having gone to Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique earlier in the day, waiting for the parade and playing Duck Duck Goose. Just a little too precious to pass up without taking a picture. And this has been there for a couple of weeks, but I haven't taken a picture of it before. There are wait time signs now for the monorail and for the boat on your walk out of the Magic Kingdom and back towards the TTC. That does it for this week. We thank you as always for your attention, and we'll catch you next time.